we share. First of all, in the papers yesterday, you'll see there was a list of cities with poor air quality, uh, uh, dangerous levels of air quality. Bristol does have that, but we were not included in the top of that list. So this talk about other places doing it and delivering is not actually reflective of the reality. Okay. Secondly, Andy Burnham has also just taken private cars out because the warning was it was having a disproportionate impact on poor people. So this is not unique to Bristol. Which you can do in these four categorizations. Uh, categorizations. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Ian in Avonmouth. Ian, on air quality and air pollution, specifically Avonmouth, which has been a, a bone of contention for a number of years. Ian, Marvin Reese here for your question. Thank you very much. I think Myron's very uh, disingenuous with his uh, answer around air pollution, especially in Avonmouth and Bristol. You know, he's not taking into account any of the incineration activities that the West of England Combined Authority um, are about to sign off another £93 million contract to increase the amount of incineration and uh, MBT processing in Avonmouth. None of the clean air um, zone recommendations takes into account industrial emissions. We've put our own air quality monitoring solutions into Amos that show our air quality is as bad, if not worse, than the centre of Bristol. Marvin's been aware of this. Kai Dudd ducked his um, responsibility to sort this problem out last year. And Marvin's done absolutely nothing apart from fell two government targets to put in a plan to stop killing people with poor air quality. And it's not just the air quality, it's the amount of flies that that generates in North Bristol. We're undergoing a major fly infestation yet again. Yeah, under this administration, because they keep pumping waste from Bristol waste. Is that, can into I just check? New this, solution. Can I just check? Is this Ian Robinson? It's correct. You are oh, very correct, Marvin. You well, came to my house with Darren Jones before well the election. From, you're well known from Twitter. Yeah, Ian. Indeed, yeah. yeah. So by the yeah. time you started answering some questions, Marvin, well, rather than trying to... Well, 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 uh, Ian, <laughs> I, 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 then, let Marvin Rees answer the points that you've just I, made I, there I, with I'm regard... Waiting. Well, let, let, yeah, let him, well, let him do it then. Uh, uh, Marvin Rees. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing to say. You know, we are absolutely committed to delivering on air quality in a way that doesn't disproportionately impact uh, the poorest people in Bristol. We have to do all those things um, at the same time. We are, you know, making our, our case with the other cities as well, with cool cities and the metro mayors, to government to make sure we have all the support we need to take the action uh, that needs to be taken, uh, but, you know, but, but that we can uh, properly resource it. So there's no question about it, but it's just, you know, th there are so many things that we're holding in, in, in air at the same time, including how we bring through passive housing, um, how we bring through the mass transit system that we're helping... Passive uh, housing? What the well, heck's that? As in terms of housing that has a minimum impact oh, right, on, oh, right. on, okay. on, on okay. emissions. Okay. And again, you know, how we uh, meet our... You know, we've got the, the, the target we're pushing towards is about carbon neutrality by 2030. The, within the city plan, I might say as well, John, that we've uh, obviously published uh, in in January, what that is doing is... is is agreeing a, a collection of city targets. That means that it's not just the council pushing at these things, but we look at all our major place shaping organisations, such as health, university, business communities, police, okay. all those organisations. We'll get to the city plan later this hour. I want to come back to you, Ian, uh, Ian, and please be brief. I've got a lot of calls to get through uh, between now and 10 o'clock. What do you want Marvin Rees to actually do for Avonmouth? I'd like Marvin, it's not just Avonmouth. In 1976, Bristol had to shut down his incinerator because mollusks 10 and a half kilometres away we're getting sick yeah you're all getting this air quality problem from Aiden Mouth. Now, so what do you want Marvin Rees to do all right I'd like some proper regulation on newer solutions Biffa bins and the rest of them and Wessex water and the port for their emissions point sources to air uh, I'd like that properly policed I'd like to see some prosecutions under public health um, uh, legislation of the impact on, on uh, residents of Bristol as a whole from these emissions, yeah, and I'd like the West of England Combined Authority to stop marketing Bristol and importing 800,000, sorry, hundreds of thousands of tonnes of waste from London, Wales to burn here, yeah, and trying to build up the capacity okay. to burn nearly 2 million tonnes of waste in Bristol per year. Ian, I'll leave it there, but I'll just come to Marvin Rees on that one, on that first point. The, the air monitoring of Avonmouth. Now, this has been an issue, you know, this was an issue when you uh, first ran for mayor back in 2012. This has been going round and around and around. Is that air quality being monitored at Avonmouth to ensure that it is within regulation? I understand it is, but if, 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 if I'm being told today it's not, then let me go and have a look to talk to my team. Uh, about making sure that is the case, and I can make a note of that right now. But um, let me let me just say as well, John. Again, one of the things that we're doing, recognizing the role that transport plays in in air quality, is our mass transit system that we're we're pushing through with now. This is you know one of the one of the challenges we're grappling with in Bristol uh, is that the Bristol has never 
uh, you know, grasped the nettle and invested in a meaningful mass transit system that provides people with an alternative to the private car. Okay. And that's what we are pursuing right now with, with this mass transit system. We're in a second feasibility study. Results will be with us um, in December. Um, and and that, that's one of the, you know, we are dealing with so many Bristol historical failures around transport, around housing, you know, around investing in education. Funny as you mentioned transport. Let's get to Mary and Stoke Bishop before I get to the travel news. Mary, we haven't got a great deal of time before I have.